Hello and welcome to another trumpet warm-up video. You are going to love this one. Uh, this is called the Nicholasville warm-up. And uh, this is the warm-up that I did my basically my entire childhood. Uh, this is the warm-up that my dad had his studio do. Put this mic on here. Um, as a group, uh, basically every morning of the weekday, I often would go into school with him and do it with him. And then I continued to do this warm-up uh, literally for 20 years. So uh, it's an incredibly good, just all around basic warm up that covers all the bases and does it pretty quickly. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start with long tones. Uh, long tones should be pretty straightforward. We've done them probably on nearly every one of the warm ups so far. Uh, I'm going to use a tuner. You don't have to, it's sometimes a good idea to do. But uh, I'm really just going to do it so that you have a better pitch center to follow. And um, we're going to do them all at once. I'm not going to talk a lot between. I might do a little bit. Um, but the main idea is that we want them to be easy. We want them to have a good sound. So we're always improving that sound. And uh, we want to make sure that we're, we're supporting our air exponentially through the course of each breath, right? So that as I get closer to the end of my air every time, I'm actually pushing harder from, from the diaphragm and, and engaging those muscles, right? Uh, and that's gonna keep the sound and the ease consistent. So that's what we're trying to do. We're gonna start on G for us, so that's F concert. And uh, we're gonna go down from there all the way down to low G. And we're just gonna always do a half step down and back up. And you'll see what I mean. If you're not sure, watch a little bit of the video and then you can do it along with me. And that'll be sort of the theme. I'm, this is one that when I started doing it was not written down and you learned how to do all these things by listening to everybody else do it and trying to emulate it. So it was a little chaotic in the room, but the, uh, the, the idea is that you do it by ear. So you're listening to the sounds and you're listening to how easy somebody else is making it sound. And uh, that's a really, really valuable thing. So hopefully I can make it sound easy for you. We're all, we're going to add one thing to this that didn't, that we didn't do, uh, back in those days, this is the uh, uh, 1980s and 90s that I was doing this warm up uh, mainly, and um, and that is we're going to journal my my trumpet journal or or you can say log book or whatever is right here. Here's a bunch of pages, a couple of pages of it. This is about oh one two three four five six seven. This is about seven days, and uh, all you have to do to keep a good trumpet journal at least to start is log how long you do something. So we're gonna do what I call a count up timer version of this. I have a timer right here. Every time we start something, I'm gonna start the timer. And when we stop it, I'll reset it. I'll write down that time and we'll also log how much we rest. That's gonna be really important, uh, especially if you're struggling with your playing. Uh, a lot of times it's the ratio of rest to playing. This warm up doesn't have as much rest in it as most of mine do, but it's also a lot lower impact uh, in, in, in many ways than some of my others. So um, if this is too much for you, then rest more. If, this is, if you feel like you're getting cold in between um, items, then you can go faster if you want. If you think you can handle it, then go for it. But logging it, you'll actually know how long it is instead of just like, ah, I don't know, it feels like it. And it's also okay if, if everything's going well for you uh, and you don't log anything, oh, okay, then you can do it by feel as long as that's working. Uh, it's really when things stop working that we need to have some, some data and, uh, and be data driven about our next decision. So I'm going to log it today. You're welcome to do it with me. Um, and you should really log all your practice sessions this way, I think. So anyway, here we go with some long tones on the Nicholasville. Uh, I've talked far too long, so let's get to it. We can also do some lip bends in here and I'll show you what that sounds like as we do it. So here we go. Breath attack only, easy, good sound, exponential support.
the, the bend should take a lot of air. You, you rush air past and lower your jaw or your tongue and it should drop in pitch but stay active. And when you come back up, the pitch should be flatter. Uh, e flat now. That's where I start to lose too much. Uh, you can also stop doing the bends after low C because it's it's all just sort of flabby down there. But a lot of people find it helps them stay engaged. All right, two more. Uh, one more. Okay, G. Yeah. <laughs> Maximum above above low C, the maximum bend you should be able to do is a major third, like I've been doing. Uh, some people can do somehow more. I'm not sure how, uh, but it's okay if you can't get a whole major third. If you can get a half step, that's something, right? And you can work on that. So okay, uh, that was five and a half minutes roughly. I only I mark everything in the half minute. I don't want to get obsessive about five minutes and 22 seconds when I'm journaling. That's crazy. Uh, so. I just, oh, it's not crazy. If you want to do it, go ahead. But I, I, don't, I don't need that. Uh, so I'm just going to put 5.5, and I'm going to put long tones, and I'm going to put B-flat trumpet because I, I don't always do everything on the B-flat trumpet. As you've seen in some of my other warm-ups, I do C trumpet warm-ups sometimes. Uh, sometimes you just warm up on some mouthpieces, and then you get to playing. Uh, there are a lot of different warm-ups out there, so uh, I, I want to make sure I know what, I'm, what, I've up, what I've been up to. And the idea of the journal is that if I am having trouble or if I remember that I had a good day once, I want to be able to replicate that uh, or undo what I've done. Uh, if it may be, Yesterday I played for uh, four hours, and I didn't play that whole time. In fact, I only played 65 minutes out of that time. But I, uh, I feel pretty good today, so I know that was a good ratio for me, which is, I guess, approximately a quarter of the time. And I did other things during the day. I mean, I was watching TV, some of it. I came and did laundry. I did some 
Uh, I made some lunch and ate it and brushed my teeth after and sort of came back. But I played constantly for a while. So um, I generally rest about as much as I play while I'm playing. And then I try to rest at least twice as much as I played when I'm trying to really get some good rest in. So I can show you all those numbers if you really want to know. But uh, right now we're just sort of resting. So I'll tell you about the next thing we're going to do. We're going to do an endurance exercise that starts in the super low register, comes all the way up to C in the staff, and then goes all the way back down to low F sharp. And uh, there's going to be a couple things going on. First of all, we're not going to stop during the exercise at all. I'll turn my tuner off because it's just going to be it's just going to be bad news for me. Um, yeah, you should you should do it with a tuner if you if you can. But it moves kind of fast, and the notes move back and forth, so the tuner won't be able to hang with us, uh, at least not this old Seiko that I have. Uh, but anyway, so we're, we're not going to stop because this is an endurance and flexibility challenge. Uh, but I don't think of it as a challenge. Again, it's just a warm up. It's low impact. So I want it to just flow, right? So I'm, again, I'm trying to keep that ease of playing through from the long tones. And now uh, basically we're going to play the common range of the trumpet, which is the low range up to the middle of the staff. Basically, that's where you play. Some people call it the cash register because that's where you make the most money playing those notes really well. Um, and then we're, we're just going to add in flexibility and slurs as we feel comfortable doing that. So you'll hear me do that. Uh, this is a hard one to know how to do before you've ever heard it. So I recommend listening to it one time. And then if you want to do it with me, you can rewind and do it. Uh, or you can just uh, put it into your own uh, warm up some other time. Uh, but the goal is to stay engaged the whole time, pliable, right? So that we're, we're sort of in a ready state and not feeling squashed or like we're muscling it out too much, and, and we're basically building stamina, okay? So you breathe when you need to, but you try to do it in time. You can also do it with a metronome. I'm not going to right now. Um, well, I guess I could. I don't know why I wouldn't, since if you might do it with me, I should do it with a metronome. This might be sort of slow. I'll, I'm gonna go 86. We'll see if I make it, okay? So. We start on low F sharp, and we always go da, 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 just up by half step and always up a half step and back down, sort of like reverse long tones, okay? And uh, here we've rested, we've rested almost four minutes. So I'm going to wait for it to say four minutes as I write down four minutes, and uh, then I'll reset this thing. And we'll go. So I always struggle with the first note. Hey, a little F sharp sucks. What are you going to do? Here we go.
We should should burn a little bit, right? It's a lot of muscle engagement. And here we are, it takes, takes almost exactly three and a half minutes to do that. So here we are writing down 3.5, almost write 3.3 all the time. Uh, and that was uh, endurance flexibility. Yeah. So I don't know what else to call that, uh, but that's what that's for. And now we need a longer rest, right? So I've already started the timer. Uh, the, our last rest was four minutes, so we really should take five minutes at this point. And uh, the rest of the warm up actually goes pretty quickly, and so it's okay if we spend this time sort of, you know, uh, well resting and just talking a little bit here. So um, this this warm up again, it has some intense parts, but overall it's actually really low impact, and it makes you feel ready to sort of start your day right after, or at least with a short rest after. Uh, and there, there's some options in it as well. We used to do scales. Uh, somebody would pick a key every every week or every day or however often we were doing this all together with my dad's whole studio. Again, at the time I was like 11 or 12 uh, or even younger. And so somebody would pick a key and uh, they then we would do scales in that key and we would do uh, sometimes high range in that key. Uh, or we'd do the whole high range thing and then we do some modal scales. Uh, that's another thing. And I'm going to show you the modal scales in that spot, as well as some other things that you can do. Top tone scales, uh, just your normal two octave scales. If you want to just right, that's fine too. Uh, it's good to do scales every day. And if you're going to do it every day, you may as well put it in your warm up, right? So, um, so right. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, if you've done other ones, you've done what I, I often call Vince slurs. Vince is my dad's name. And so we're stealing a lot of stuff from him. And uh, I don't mind doing that because uh, he's been very influential for me. So, and, and lots of other people, uh, not, uh, not to sort of toot uh, our own family horn, but, uh, but yeah, he's, this is a, a warm up that worked for uh, literally dozens and dozens and dozens of people over uh, a 45, 50 year teaching career. And uh, I should really know that exact number. I mean, it's, it's fuzzy because it's like 40 years officially, but then there's more, you know. Anyway, um, so it's a lot of people that benefited from doing warm ups like this. And it's not the warm up he does today. Uh, maybe I'll have to have him guest star on here and he can do one uh, of his current warm up, which I would be very interested to find out. I don't think I've seen him do it uh, for a few years now. And so it's probably quite different, but, uh, and, and that, that's one of the things that I want to promote on this channel is you should not necessarily do exactly the same warm up every single day. If it's working for you, then yes, you should do it, but it's okay to change things. If, uh, maybe something doesn't work as well one day and you need to spend some more time on it. Okay. Well, if you're working with a timer, a countdown timer, you may not have afforded yourself time to do that. And we'll cover a timer warm up on another day when I can connect my phone to the to the video and you can see it along with me and we can we can go through it. Uh, that's the warm up maybe I'm uh, most infamous for is doing a timer countdown. The lady on the phone tells you what to do and you do it kind of warm up, which again is good for some people, but it's also really bad for some people. So um, it, you should have some flexibility in your warm up, not literally flexibility like lip slurs, but also that. Uh, but you should you should have the room to experiment with other things. And that's really what this channel is all about. These are all different warm ups. They have some similar components. You can tell just my own sort of in, implicit uh, bias towards things that I have worked for me. And of course, that's going to be the case because uh, those are the things that I know are good to share. Uh, there are other things that haven't worked for me that I know other people benefit from. And eventually I'll try to cover those things in this channel. Uh, because they might help someone. And I, I hope that that is the case, but uh, we're going to start with the stuff I know, of course. So we're just at four minutes. We've got a little more time here. So I'll tell you about the next thing. Uh, this next thing is going to be, uh, I call it proto Vince slurs. So we were talking about Vince slurs earlier. We're going to do Vince slurs because this is where they came from, but we're going to do proto Vince slurs first. And that is basically, we're just going to do G, C, G, and C, right? Just those, those bottom three partials of the horn. And we're going to do those uh, at, at like a quarter, let's say quarter notes and then eighth notes and then 16th notes. And then we're going to do a lip bend at the end, maybe just to see if we're still kind of in that same position that we just got done uh, doing the endurance flexibility exercise uh, and learning. So 
that's what we're going to do next. Uh, we're just about there, so I'm just going to go ahead and mark it. So we're moving right along here. And uh, I'm not actually sure. This one probably, I did, I did all these yesterday, so I guess I could look them up. Um, Proto slurs are going to probably take, I sometimes call them Vince slurs prime because they're the ones that come before the ones we call Vince slurs. Uh, that's not really how prime works, but it could be. So these take about two and a half minutes the way that I do them. Again, we could do it with a metronome, but this time I'm not going to. Uh, and we're just going to go straight for it. So I'll give you the example, and then we'll do that one again together. Uh, it goes... Or a little faster than that, actually. All right, so, so that we're, we're ending up... So it's, you know, it's a little bit, you don't want to feel like you're hitting each parcel with your different lip amounts, right? So I restarted the timer for me so I can write down the right thing. Uh, but here we go. Same one. Uh. You want sort of a long tone. I started the double time early on that one. It's sort of just, uh, you know, faster, 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 right? Or I guess faster, faster. Next one, uh, we're just going down by half step now. We want this all to feel like a long tone, but engaged like our, our endurance exercise. Next one, F. quite get down to the low B flats on the faster ones, but what I didn't do is just let everything fly open. So I can do better on the next one by being a little more active. Uh, e. And some of my students really, they, they're, they'll worry about really locking into these slots. That's not really what these are for. You want to sort of slide past them uh, rather than lock into them. And eventually you learn the coordination where it locks in without you making it lock in. And that's what we're looking for. Now, E flat. lip bending options in this don't don't do them if they don't seem to help you now final one that's not part of it i just sometimes i need to do that to make sure i'm not getting myself stuck in a rut right so that's all there is to it. That took three minutes total with a little talking. I'm going to mark it. That was VS prime. And now we're not going to rest very long for this next part because we're just going to do some more slurs that are kind of connected to those. But we do want to know that we took a short rest. So maybe we're going to do a minute. So the next one are just standard Vince slurs. Uh, if you haven't done Vince slurs before, they're very, uh, very simple. I will I will not count this as rest for me, but I will. this is still rest for you, and I'll show you. So we're going to do basically three things that are connected together, and then a lip trill at the end. So the first, uh, three, three sets of three notes, right? So the first is the middle three partials. That's going to be, right, C, G, C, E, C. And then well, we're going to do that four times with a possible double at the end, you'll see. Uh, then we're going to do the top three, we're going to do that four times with a double at the end. And then we're going to do the ones we just did, the lowest three. And then uh, lip trill at the end if you can. 
And you always want to try for the lip trail, even if it doesn't want to come out, right? Just go for it because it keeps you sort of figuring out how to be pliable. All right, that was a minute and a half. So again, I'll, I won't mark it for me, but I'll mark it for us. And here we go. Vince slurs. See those doubles at the end you don't have to do those you can just go straight through this one i won't do the doubles just so you have somebody to play along with and you can kind of wrap your mind around it ready uh this is on b now all right now i'll go back to doing the doubles this is how i like to do it B flat. are going well or trills rather today so i'm not sure what that's about except that we did so much uh bending that my jaw position is a little further open so i have a little more room to maneuver uh but sometimes it's the opposite sometimes it's too big and then i'm not fast enough so who knows anyway a flat suck but all right G with a false fingering now and now finally F sharp after a short rest here about two and a half minutes that was a little longer because I talked but we'll put down 2.5 because it's close enough and those are Finsler's uh, so you uh, that you should feel pretty warmed up now and really we've only not done two things one is scales and one is high range and high range is important for you to do every day uh, scales too if you don't know them already if you know all your scales then you can just check up on them maybe every other day or maybe once a week if if uh, that's all it takes uh, I don't know how well you know your scales but for me I tend to need to do I'm working I like to work on the modes we've talked about that in a different video uh, and when I work on all my modes uh, those go away very quickly for me because they're fairly a new a, a fairly new thing that for me practicing wise I've been I know I've known what they are for a very long time, but uh, I didn't bother to actually practice them. And so of course I don't know them as well as I'd like to. So uh, I like to practice my modes uh, at least every other day. And then it takes me roughly two weeks to do every single um, starting note. Uh, if I do it, like I said, every other day and I try to do two, both of uh, all of those times. So really if you just do one a day, basically uh, you get through all your modes in two weeks or your major scales or whatever right because there's we work on a 12 tone system so um, you get two days off there take Sunday off I don't care right um, so uh, I, I want to show you some ways to do scales uh, you can just do them your way but there are a couple of ways and I want to show you this modal exercise so this is still time for you to rest but I'm gonna go ahead and go uh, after just a minute and a half of rest which uh, if you're doing the Vintzlers the right way, they should be rather efficient, actually. So you should feel more pliable, but not worn out. If you feel worn out, then 
you actually probably need to do slower slurs. Uh, you know, uh, try page 42 out of the old Arbenz book, page 43 out of the old Arbenz book, page 44 if you're up to it, right? Those are all great pages. If you're in the new Arbenz book, start more like on page 40. Um, but at any rate, so uh, ways to do scales. There's, uh, you can just do normal two, two octave scales, which I think you understand how to do. And always try to go as high as you can in each scale. Even if you can't do a full two octaves, let's say F is hard, right? Uh, well, at least go up to high C if you can play high C. Uh, always your full range for all your scales. Again, a, a thing I didn't practice until I was much older. Uh, I knew all my major scales, one octave, and I could not play the second octave ever. I'd get lost up there. So it's good to start right away. All right, I, I got a little extra minute of rest out of there. Uh, so here we go. I'll do, uh, I'll do one top tones. Um, gosh, let's say I'll do um, B flat, just to not be, I don't wanna always do C every time, that's boring. So I, pro I probably do B flat all the time instead now. But um, this is how the Top Tones book has you do scales. And uh, it's, a, it's a little scary, but think about how well you have to know a scale to be able to do this. Uh, so I'll demonstrate it and you can, you can get the Top Tones book and look in there. This is not really part of the Nicholasville original warm up, uh, but some scales were. And so I wanted to show you some different ways to do that. Uh, so here's top tones. <laughs> keeping track that's uh, duples triples and quadruplets uh, all in the same amount of time because you do duples twice triplets three times with an extra note so a little longer there and quadruplets uh, four times and it should be the same single breath so it's a really good way to make sure that those long tones are being applied no matter where you're playing on the horn the other thing I wanted to show you here is the modal exercise that my dad uh, I don't, I, I think he probably invented it. I don't know where he got it. If, if not, if somebody knows, then feel free to let me know. I'd love to buy the book that this came out of. But uh, basically it works like this. We're not gonna play a full scale, but we are gonna play several modes of a single starting note. And you can move this around quite quickly. So I'll do A, uh, sorry, F, because that's really easy to track. And so what we're gonna do is A, uh, geez, sweet, sweet. The A is what changes, which is what's throwing me off. Uh, F major. So it's gonna have an A natural, uh, F minor, and then we're gonna do F octatonic, and then we're gonna do F locrian, right? Which is, in other words, F sharp major starting on the seventh. Um, and, and you do them all in pretty quick succession. And if you mess one up, then you can do it a bunch of times in a row to make sure that you've really got it before you move on. So I'll do it very slowly, and then I'll do it like we usually do it. If you wanted to, you can move up now to F sharp. Because you've really just played it. I always tried to go the opposite way so that I kind of didn't cheat with the last one of one was the same as the next one, uh, the first one of the next one. But you can do it how you want to do it. So uh, I guess I'll keep going and I'll show you how these things sort of work. F sharp is a nasty one. So uh, wish me luck. Often 
do the last one twice, or I mean a third time. Um, you can also incorporate different tonguing patterns into this, right? Oh, sorry, sorry. that one up so I I had to do a little punishment practice there really get it into my fingers uh, uh, so slurring three is really hard so anyway uh, you don't need to hear me go through this for 20 minutes uh, but you could do these for probably maybe five six seven minutes in a row and really work all the way through from low F sharp all the way up to I don't know high F sharp right you could do two octaves of these things and they really get your fingers going and they really get your your mind sort of working and um, and it's a nice sort of like uh, uh, Chopin-esque kind of uh, contraction of the scale right you flat one thing and then you flat some more things and then you keep those flats and flat some more and then all of a sudden you just shift the whole thing up and now you're back to where you were before uh, very E minor prelude if you will so okay now it's time for everybody's favorite uh, high range so if you have trouble doing this exercise uh, that's okay. It's, it's troublesome. Uh, but the idea of it is that the lip trill at the beginning of it is really crucial. So if you can't do the lip trill, keep trying the lip trill and keep doing them, right? Do all of them and just work on the lip trills of each one. Uh, if this, that is if the scale part is too much, right? Or if the lip trill isn't going well. Um, otherwise you just, you want to continue doing them all the way up, all the way up to high C uh, even if you can't play up to double high C. I'm not going to play up to double high C today. Uh, I'll probably cap out at G or A flat. And so then once I get to those that are, that are too high to do an octave, I'll just do a fifth or something, right? I want to stretch my range to that maximum and just keep hitting that maximum so that that gets more comfortable. Okay, so that's plenty of time. I, I, just, I just did seven and a half minutes of something, uh, talking and other things. And so we'll call that modal plus pop tones. Uh, okay, so here we go. We're, uh, if you haven't done the high range with me before, we do, uh, it's in a bunch of other videos, but we do an arpeggio up to a false fingered F sharp. Okay, so make sure you use your slides to get it in tune. And we're gonna do a lip trill from F sharp to G sharp on that note. And then we're just gonna take a breath and we're gonna do this crazy sounding scale that's basically Right? That's all it is. It's just little triplet scales, okay? Up a note, back down, and then to the next note of the scale, up a note, back down. So if that's confusing, watch the other videos. Watch this a couple of times. You'll get it. Again, this wasn't written down, so we did all this by ear, and uh, it's a much more, it's not a more efficient way to learn it, it but it's a, it's a more thorough way to learn it. So here we go. take sufficient rest in between these because if one of them hurts you the next one's only going to hurt worse if you go right into it okay Now we don't have false fingerings anymore. Sorry, I should have said that G was one and three. Now we're now we're on to regular fingering. I try to do some double tonguing. It's not working great, but. That's why I need to do it. All right, now up to A. And that A flat felt a little forced. I'm still gonna go for the A, but it's okay if I don't get it. And then after that, if that's my maximum, I'm just gonna keep going up to G or whatever makes sense, right? Uh, a now. You 
can see it's a little bit the wild west i do different stuff on the back end i even do different stuff during the scales part sometimes i do two scales sometimes i just go between the fifth a couple of times uh, it's all to just kind of get things loosened up and working together i wouldn't have got that double a at all if i hadn't done what i did with the high e's okay so here we go on b flat again you should keep doing these and just keep working on the lip trill if the other part is too hard the lip trill still can work right most people can play up the high c and they still want to improve their range but their lip trill on high C is, isn't working for them. So that's th that first part is what you wanna keep working on and just work your way up, right? All right, here we go, B flat. got it struggled a little bit so and i don't want to i don't want to push it too hard i have a bunch of stuff to practice today so if, if you're like me you're not going to keep banging out for the double high b and the double high c you're going to just do the fifth now so that's what i'll do just also because it's a good example and also because i don't want to just fuzz out on those notes for you on the video so i'm too proud i guess here we go on b Double tongue is really hard once your lip sort of swells up a little bit. It's, it's hard to keep everything working. That's, that's a good sign if it, if it can work. And finally, high C. If you're, if you're still doing octaves, go for the double high C. Otherwise, we're going for G. That's plenty. And that was, whew, that was five minutes? That couldn't have been, right? Uh, I guess it could have been, yeah. Five and a half minutes. Uh, oh, I didn't, that's because I didn't start it after the rest. Anyway, uh, so that whole thing, um, I, you probably know on the video. Uh, let's see if it'll tell me, actually. I do this every time, don't I? Yeah, this whole thing took about 45 minutes, but that was with a lot of talking and that big seven minute break in the middle where I was showing you different scales. Um, this usually takes me almost precisely 35 minutes and that's with all this rest in there and everything, right? Um, so it's very efficient because you've got your long tones, you've got some endurance flexibility stuff, you've got starting out like medium range flexibility, you've got some faster extended range uh, flexibility, right? So we're going faster and larger and uh, you've got some scales in there again. You might just play one scale up and down and that's it. Uh, so that doesn't take any time at all. And then you've got your high range and you're going to you're going to spend five minutes on your high range. And so you want to really make sure that you're you're uh, doing it right. And if you're not doing it right, that you're spending at least that much time on it every day trying to figure out how to do it right. So I call this one the Nicholasville because that's kind of where I around the place that I grew up uh, or the places that I I frequented back then. And uh, so I hope you enjoyed this warm up. I hope that it helps you and um, feel free to throw any of it out and replace it with other things and do that th the same thing with the other warm-ups. Uh, figure out what works for you. And, uh, and, and I wanted to introduce you to my, my sort of logbook uh, trumpet journal because I think that's the best way to figure out how these things work best for you. So until next